Hi friends, have you ever wanted to make your own podcast? We recommend using Anchor. It's a service that we use to host our podcast for free, and they will also distribute your podcast to all the listening platforms for you. There's also these really cool creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, and they help you grow and make money with no minimum listenership. It's really everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor, that's A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M to get started. I want to visit Dogland Run with the power pups You've got to, got to love their style And how they never run And welcome to episode 5 of season 2 of the adventures of Power Dog in Jogland. <laughs> now my mom is going to read and she is going to obviously, as you say, as you may remember. So let's start off, mom. Thanks, Hank. You may remember when our story left off that Power Dog and Tuffy had run as fast as their four legs could carry them away from Intergalactic Pizza Party after the reigning dance champion, Bear Chop, had flung the doors wide open with a thud and hollered in her great booming voice, President Sandals has been dog napped. They had run all the way to Fennec Condro's new home in the oldest part of Lictopolis, hoping for help. Do you also remember that Seely was practically beside himself upset about something he could not explain to Taffy? Do you remember how she felt when she saw a familiar and unsettling sight? Well, don't worry. We're going to get back into the story there too. But first, we are going to back up just a little further in Dogland time to an event that took place before this second season story began. You may remember that I mentioned this event before. We're going back to the summit or big important meeting that President Sandals hosted on his family's island home and sprawling farm on Hawaii. For you see, even though everything really worked out for the best when it came to the volcano problem on Dogland, and the arrival of the really cool, very kind alien family that just happened to eat lava and poop out perfect lava rock building blocks. That entire adventure had also created a new set of problems on Dogland between the fennec fox dogs of Miaui and most of the other dogs on the whole planet of Dogland. As you may remember, the mysterious fennecs were indeed keeping secrets possibly bigger secrets than anyone on Dogland had known. And as often happens with secrets, when they are found out, feelings can get hurt, arguments can happen, and politics can get, well, sticky and political. Do you all know what the word politics means? Politics is the way that people living in groups, often called societies, make decisions together. Politics are about the agreements we all make so that we can live together in groups such as tribes, cities, countries, or in this case, whole planets, like Dogland. On Dogland, the dogs had gotten together and asked a natural leader who grew up as a humble and hardworking farmer dog to help figure out such problems. His name was Bernie Sandals, and he was their president of the whole planet. Dogs, barked President Sandals. Thank you for joining me in this circle. 
on this historic occasion. Do we have very grave matters to discuss? We do indeed. But will we get through these matters respectfully and thoughtfully? With every stakeholder involved? You bet your biscuits and bananas we will. Let's never forget, we are dogs. Dogs do hard things with courage and patience and above all, love. Sitting around a large, circular, low table were delegates or representatives from every geographic region of Dogland. Not only were there the Fenix of Miaui, including their new leader, Max Rowe, and Bernie, who was from both Hawaii and the capital of Dogland, Lictopolis, but others had come from all of Dogland's far-flung places. In attendance were the Dogland Desert Coyotes, the Roo Dogs and Dingoes of Dogstralia and New Squealand, the Scotties of Scottyland, the Doglaska Huskies, Sea Dogs from every corner of the Dogland Sea, Moon Dogs from the various floating moons, Raccoon-type dogs from the Blue Starlit Forest on the side of Question Mark Mountain, and even the quiet winged Sky Puppies who had to wear special goggles and capes to protect their eyes and bodies from the hot sun of Hawuffi, as they are exclusively nocturnal. And don't let that information fool you into thinking they are fragile. For the sky puppies of Dogland, who look very much like bats here on Earth, are actually the fearless flyers of their planet, protectors of the forest and the mountains and rivers. In fact, they only held back from intervening in the events with the Abbas at Cody's request and they always trust Cody, the golden coyote. The sky puppies were at the summit because they wanted answers too. Although so many dogs were in attendance, one dog that was not at this table was Power Dog. Power Dog was feeling pretty depleted, which is a word meaning drained of energy during the entire summit. He was still reeling emotionally from the big adventure that had ultimately led to him uncovering his own connection powers, as well as playing his part in how the Abbas would come to Dogland and solve the dog's great big volcano problem. On the same day that Bernie Sandals called every dog to order around the great low table, Power Dog was gazing out the window of a quiet room in President Sandals' own childhood home a comfortable farmhouse surrounded by shade trees, fruit trees, and flowers. Power Dog was thinking and stewing about the mission he had planned and the mistakes he had made. He was thinking hard about the night he got so desperate that he stole gear from the Phoenix right before he tried to fly right into the volcano. Not only had it all gone terribly wrong, but it could have gone even more wrong. Not only could he have been hurt much worse than a singed backside, but his own brother and beloved cousin could have been hurt or worse as well. Taking the Phoenix tech without permission had created so many of the problems that dogs from everywhere were now working to solve and restore right here at this very summit. And even though he'd helped cause the problems, he felt powerless and unable to even begin to fix it, saying he was sorry over and over and over to anyone who might listen had definitely not been enough. And to make matters worse, he'd also had a lot of bad dreams about this volcano. He would wake up hot and scared, feeling his heart beat fast inside his chest. Thinking about this, he began to feel hot again as if he was still right there inside the volcano. His face and jaw and neck and back felt tight. He felt like he might cry again. He longed to be at home in his bedroom in Lictopolis. He wished he could wind back the clock to before all of it had begun. Being able to see the now mostly quiet but still belching smoky lava burps volcano from this window was not helping either. He didn't want to see it, but he also couldn't look away from it. Power Dog heard a muffled noise at the door 
He looked up to see his mother. Hello, my dear, she said warmly as she saw the beginning of tears in his eyes and his ruffled fur. I've brought you some special tea that has been harvested right here on this very farm. She took a seat next to her son and nuzzled his ear softly. They sat quietly together for a beat and leaned against each other as dogs often do. Would you like to join me in some deep belly breathing, Power Dog? He looked down and shrugged. Then they both leaned back and put their paws on their bellies and took a big, deep breath. The power Dog stared at his paws, rising and falling with his belly as he breathed. Recovering from trauma takes time, Mom Slice said as she smoothed down his ruffled fur and looked out the window. Power Dog smiled at her. What even is trauma, Mama? asked Power Dog, making a small, cheerful attempt to joke with rhymes. Breathing into his belly was starting to help his mood a little. Rhymes were a sign of cheer in their family. Mom Slice smiled. Do you remember what happened to your cousin in Colorado? Mom Slice asked. Power Dog thought for a minute. Oh, Cousin Golda? When she got bit by another dog? The bit and run? Yeah, said Mom Slice. Not long after Golda was bitten, she would just start barking loudly and nipping at anyone who surprised her or got too close to her. Oh, I remember. She bit Fetcher and he was so mad. So mad, echoed Mom Slice. That was because of trauma? Power Dog asked. Yes. The dog that bit Golda passed trauma from their own body into Golda's body, right through that bite. And she needed help to learn how to not keep passing that trauma from her body into other bodies, like Fetcher's body. Power Dog nodded thinking about a chain reaction of biting and how it stopped with Fetcher. He visualized Fetcher putting a paw up like a stop sign while standing strong and fierce. And we'll never know what trauma that dog who bit Golda experienced because they ran off so quickly. And sometimes that's just how it is. Is that why my whole body feels sad, Mom? I ache, but nobody bit me. Mom Slice turned from the window and look deep into her son's eyes. We experience trauma whenever something happens that makes us feel unsafe or makes us think that those we love are not safe. But Power Dog, you are safe and your loved ones are safe. I want to help you stop the bite of that volcano right here and right now by reminding you that you are safe with your family all around you and our love keeps each other safe. Power Dog nodded and shuddered a little. I was really scared, Mom. I don't wanna feel like that ever again. I don't wanna try really hard at something and just fail if this is what it feels like. Mom Slice put her paw around her son. Power Dog looked down at the tea before him and sighed. Mom, he said, have you ever tried really, really hard and just totally failed? Have you ever let everyone down, even made them hate you? Mom Sly smiled a crooked little smile and looked out the window. Ha, <laughs> have I ever. I would not be who I am today without the gift of failure. And no one hates you, Power Dog. Guess what else our family love protects us from? It protects us from others not liking us. And trust me, I'm the expert on not being liked by the Fenix. Gift? Mom, this isn't funny. His face started to feel hot again and he did not want the warm tea. He set it down and looked away from her. How could she make light of this? Couldn't she tell how upset he was? Oh, Power Dog. They sat quietly together for a beat as Mom Sly slowed her breathing and leaned against her son just a little closer. Power Dog looked up and out the window. I can't say sorry enough for what I did, and it's not fair. I didn't ask for any of this, but I am sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh, Power Dog, dear. 
Mom Slice looked out the window, too. These have been the most unusual times. None of this is normal. And we have all made risky choices. Are you feeling embarrassed? And maybe a little shame? Yeah? Power Dog nodded silently and looked down at the tea. Yeah, you made some bad choices. But do you know why your decision led to failure? She asked. Power Dog picked up the teacup and thought about the question. Well, I took, I stole, I mean, I took some Fennec technology without asking and then made a really fast plan and then I put everyone in danger and I was really scared that Tuffy was hurt and that Fetcher was hurt and she stroked the little curl on the top of his head and nodded. Focus your eyes on something and tell me, what would you do next time? if you really could rewind the clock and you could go back. He stared down into the tea and started to imagine things differently. From the very moment he chose to steal the Fennec technology, which he knew was wrong from the start, the leaves in the tea were floating back and forth and back and forth. So he followed them with his eyes as he spoke. I guess, I guess I would ask for help and you know, like ask to borrow stuff and try to not do it all by myself. You know, like Dad said, like heroes, real heroes, are helpers, they're not lone wolves. Mom Slice smiled. That's right, helpers, they know we are all stronger when we work together. Just like the great, great tree, we are all connected at our roots and rooted in our connection. Oh, did I forget to tell you, dear listeners, did you know Another really cool thing about Dogland is that every tree there is connected to every other tree there through one gigantic massive tree root ball in the center of their planet. They have pine trees and banyan trees and mangrove trees and palm trees and of course dogwood trees. And deep underneath the rich wonderful soil and rock and clay and oceans and even underground forests and everything else is this fabulous, massive, wonderful root ball they call the Great Great Tree. Power Dog nodded and sipped the tea. Now that it had cooled, it tasted a little bit like Dogland licorice, which he really liked. He'd heard this before. We are all connected at our roots and rooted in our connection many times. It was a fairly popular saying on Dogland. But, continued Mom Slice, you need to know that if you become so afraid of failing, then you will never know the great joy of trying and succeeding. It's all balance, and that takes time and each other's help and support to get right. You couldn't have learned to walk or fly if you'd never fallen down. Power Dog looked at his mother quizzically. Mom, I don't even remember learning to walk or fly, and I'm pretty sure that I was just born knowing that. Oh, let me tell you, you were not born knowing how to walk or fly, and many of your earliest steps were total <laughs> but glorious failures, she laughed. What? Power Dog said. He wondered what was she on about, and was she making fun of him while he was already down? Yes, Power Dog, I said it. You absolutely fell right on your sweet puppy face, and you know I love that face so much. But when you were learning to get around on your own, your first step, oof, it was incredible. It was so incredible that we made special puppy biscuits just to celebrate. And although many of your steps really were flat out failures, your fifth step was really quite perfect. Your 50th step was pure artistry. And when you first fluttered, our hearts flew with you. Power Dog pictured his tinier puppy self wobbling around their apartment in Lictopolis and smiled. Fetcher had told him how he wobbled to and fro, ran into walls and furniture, and even smacked right into the window one time when he was first learning to fly, then hover. Ah, there, a smile. What a lovely start to feeling better, she said. But you take all the time you need to feel your feelings. Thinking and observing, you know, really noticing and then making sense of this life, that's your greatest superpower. Power Dog took another sip of the tea. 
This time it had hints of mushroom umami and seaweed, two more favorite tastes. Did thinking about those celebratory walking biscuits actually change the flavor of this tea? There is no better time to try, to fail, to learn, to succeed than when we're together. Just promise me we will do adventures together that you know your family is here for you, to try with you, to fail with you, to heal with you, and of course, to win with you. If we all stay connected at our roots. Power Dog was taken aback when he realized Mom Slice had gotten so wound up that she was levitating off the floor by a few inches. She looked down and smiled, looked back into Power Dog's eyes and grabbed his paws in hers. He could feel warm, gentle vibrations like a soft purr coming from her. Mom, he said, you said that you tried and failed before too, that you made the Fenix not like you. Is that why you never talk about your time with the Fenix? Mom Slice looked down as she began to sink back into a comfortable seat on the floor. Meowie looked as beautiful as I remembered it. I just barely remembered it until I went back. What happened while you were there, and why did you leave? asked Power Dog. Mom Slice smiled and looked out the window at the volcano in the distance. Well, I was actually kicked out of the Fennec Academy, and even banished from Meowie, right after discovering the real cats there. They used a tricky enchantment to wipe my memory. We have to put a stop to the cat enchantments, Power Dog. Power Dog nearly spit out the tea that had cooled enough for him to be gulping. Pfft. What? Mom, what? You have to tell me everything. You, you were kicked out? Banished? Enchantments? What enchantments? Enchantments are real? She nodded yes and took in a deep breath. Where do I begin? I guess at the beginning... Well, you see, Power Dog, there is a reason I am called Mom Slice, and it dates back to before I was a mom and before you, Fetcher, or even your father were in my life. Power Dog nodded enthusiastically. He couldn't believe he was finally getting to the story he'd been waiting for as long as he could remember. Uh huh, uh huh. Everyone called you Unala. That was your name then. Yes, dear. Unala was my first name, but there was a point where I became Unala Slice. It was when I won the Global Dogland Sword Fighting Championships. What? Mom, what? Power Dog could not believe his ears. Mom Slice smiled and looked out the window again as if she was looking out into the very scenes of her distant history. Your grandparents, they hated that I loved the fighting arts so much. But as soon as I tried my paw at Fennec Fencing, a very creative type of sword fighting, I knew it was for me. I loved it. And my favorite trainer at the College of the Dog Arts, a Fennec master, put my name in and helped me attend and win competition after competition. Next thing you know, there I am in the arena facing dog after dog and somehow winning. I was actually the youngest dog to ever win the title. Just as Power Dog was about to ask more questions, the door swung open and Dog Wings walked in. You are both needed in the Great Hall. Fetcher is about to tell everyone what he saw that night on Meowie. And he turned to Mom Slice and said, Then it will be your turn, and the entire world will know about the real cats. All of it. Now, I'm joined by my co-author and the seven-year-old with deep dogland knowledge, my son Hank. Hi, Hank. Hi, Hank. What do you think trauma means? Trauma means, I think that trauma means that, like, something has happened to you that, like, somebody else had. Mm-hmm. Somebody else passed some fear or sadness or pain to you? Which they shouldn't do. They should just ask for help. Right. And probably everybody needs help, huh? Even dogs. Even dogs. That's why in the future I'm hoping that there's something where we can make it so we can talk to dogs. I love that. So we can teach them and help them and help even cats too. Cats too. I love that too. 
You had a friend in kindergarten whose mom was an expert in talking to animals. It's called an animal behaviorist. So when we adopted Roger, she offered to help us learn how to communicate with Roger to make him happier here in our home. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Hiya, hiya, <laughs> give me a big hiya. Do you have any advice for kids who are listening who might be experiencing sadness, loss, trauma? Well, it's hard for kids that didn't have that to uh, help, but I'm a really good thinker about other kids. Mm-hmm. So if they're having trauma, if they're having trauma, ask somebody for help. Mm-hmm. Ask for help. Heroes are helpers. That's right. And and even people who make bad choices, mm-hmm. even they have a good side in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who knows what trauma they went through. Okay, another part of the story is about you finding out that I was a sword fighting champion when I was your age from Granny. And we kind of worked that into the Dogland story for Mom Slice. What do you think about um, there being a legacy of sword fighting in our family? There is. Yeah. Is that exciting? Yes. You were really excited about the type of sword fighting I did, which was called buffer sword fighting. And that led to us making lightsabers out of pool noodles, which became a really fun family activity. We had lots of good family duels. Should we post a link or how-to for our listeners on how to make their own pool noodle lightsabers? All you have to do is buy a pool noodle, have tape, have tape, yes. and then use it. Okay, I have a joke for you. Okay. 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 We. It's one of the things that we talk that we might have talked about, um, where you have a funny joke that doesn't even make sense. Oh, I love those absurdist humor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why did the dog cross the street? Why? It jump in a car's window. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. <laughs> I know, right? Because he's like just walking to get into a window and then look his head out. He doesn't <laughs> even try to get to the other side like any garbage or stuff. So he just gets <laughs> to the side just get into a car. <laughs> I have one for you. What do you get when you cross a dog with a phone? Uh, a golden receiver? (laughs) Thank you, listeners. If you liked what you heard, you can see more content at our website, PowerDogAdventures, all one word, dot com. There you can sign up for our infrequently emailed newsletter and also submit any good dog jokes. And we'll be forever grateful if you feel like telling your friends about the show, too. If you are looking for more great shows, then please check out the other members of Kids Listen, a grassroots organization dedicated to high-quality audio for kids and families. There are well over 100 great shows to find there. Ask your grown-up to check out kidslisten.org to find out more. Special thanks to our creative partner, the inimitable Jason Rourke, who makes these stories sound extra good with his wise counsel, recording, sound design, and even original music. This podcast has been made possible in part by funding provided by the Regional Arts and Culture Council in Portland, Oregon. Thank you, Rack. It has been made even more possible by listeners like you. Thank you so much for your support and extra big thanks to our Patreon patrons who get early access to all of our episodes ad-free, as well as goodies and merch and birthday shout-outs at any level of support. We are not joking even a little when we say we could not do this without you. The Adventures of Power Dog and Dogland is created in the ancestral lands of the Cowlitz, Multnomah, Kathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Wasco, Molala, Watlala, Bands of the Chinook, and other indigenous nations and tribes of the first people who made their homes along the rivers here in what is now called Portland, Oregon. And special thanks to our own Granny and Gramps who helped us write and record our Power Dog theme song that you'll hear at the end of the episode. Hey, Granny and Gramps, what key did y'all say that's in? 
It's, it's in, in D, D for, for Dogland. tales to tell and when we come together all our tales will wag as well woof woof Ow. Ow.